Welcome back everybody. Moving on to the next example. So a pilot wants to fly 300 kilometers per hour north 72 degrees west. If there's a wind of 50 kilometers per hour from a direction of south 20 degrees west, in which direction and at what airspeed should the pilot fly the plane? So notice in this question, so if we draw that general diagram that I've been drawing in the similar example, so we got the plane and then we got the wind and then we got the resultant. Notice in this question that we're given the resultant because it says that a uh, pilot wants to fly 300 kilometers per hour north 72 degrees west. So that's the resultant velocity. And we're also given the wind velocity, 50 kilometers per hour from a direction south 20 degrees west. So notice in this question, we're going to have to find the plane velocity, the airspeed and the direction out which the pilot should steer and then the wind is going to take the plane and have it fly at 300 kilometers per hour north 72 degrees west. So let's start off by drawing this vector, the uh, resultant vector. So I'm going to make a compass here. So I got north, um, west, south, east. And the resultant is 300 kilometers per hour north 72 degrees west. So north 72 degrees west, that's about there. Right? And this is 300 kilometers per hour. And this here is the resultant. And then we have to draw the uh, wind vector as well. And notice from this diagram that the head of the wind vector is going to meet the head of the resultant vector. So we know the head of the wind vector is going to be at this point as well. So let's start off by drawing another compass at, this, uh, at the head of the resultant. And notice that we're told the direction of the wind. We're told that it's coming from a direction south 20 degrees west. So if we draw that on the side, we got north, west, south, east, south 20 degrees west, south 20 degrees west, that's this way. Right? So that's going towards south 20 degrees west, but notice that we're told that it's coming from a direction, south 20 degrees west. So this is 20 degrees. Well, if it's coming from that direction, that means it's going in the opposite direction like this. In fact, we can actually take this arrow and instead of drawing it here, we can draw it here as well. So this is 20 degrees and this here would be 90 minus 20, which is 70 degrees. So notice that the head of the wind vector there it's right in the middle of the compass and we need it in the middle of the compass here as well. So we could just pretty much transfer that over here. So that wind, remember the head of the wind and the head of the resultant, they have to be attached and it's not going towards south 20 degrees west, it's coming from that direction. So it's going this way. So we know that this here is 20 degrees as we can see in this diagram. Right, and then this here is 70, though we don't really need that angle, but let's, um, let's write it anyway. So let's actually shorten this maybe a little bit. So this is the resultant, and then this vector here, this is the wind vector. So notice now that we can draw the plane vector, meaning that we can start at the tail of the resultant and then connect to the tail of the wind, that would be the plane. So something like that. All right, does that make sense? So the plane goes this way, the wind is gonna take it up a bit, and then it's gonna end up flying 300 kilometers per hour north 72 degrees west. Now, a couple of things here. Um, I didn't label the angle here, so this resultant is north 72 degrees west, so this is 72 degrees here. So notice that we can use the Z pattern 
because this line and this line are parallel. There's a line going through it. So this angle and this angle have to equal. You see that? So this angle and this angle equal because of the Z pattern. So erasing some stuff here that we don't need. So we don't need this 70 degrees. And instead of putting this wind, I'm going to put the actual speed. So we got 50 kilometers per hour for this vector. And then this resultant, we know it has a speed of 300. And then notice that we can figure out what that total angle is. We got 20 plus 72. So instead of having these two angles written out, let's just write 92 degrees right there. And now notice that we have enough information to figure out what the airspeed is. That's going to be this here. So let's, um, let's just call that the plane vector. So solving for the magnitude of this vector here would give us the airspeed. And then if we want the direction, then we can solve for this theta. Right? So if I take this triangle and I draw it on the side here, just so you can see, let's actually erase this too. I'll draw it up here. So we got this, 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 uh, 92 degrees, 300, we got 50, and then we're solving for this magnitude P, and then we're solving for this data. All right, so we have enough information in this triangle to solve for both of those variables now. So for this magnitude, for the airspeed, we can uh, use cosine law. Give myself a little more room here. So we got that opposite side squared is equal to 50 squared plus 300 squared minus 2 times 50 times 300 times cos of that opposite angle from this side. And when you do that calculation, when you do that right side square root it, you end up getting 305.85 kilometers per hour. So that represents the airspeed, the speed of the plane before it hits that wind. And then solving for this theta, we can use the sine law. So we can go sine of 92 over that opposite side, which is this, we just solve for that. So 305.85 and that equals sine of theta all over 50. And then we can uh, cross multiply and isolate for that sine theta. So sine theta would be uh, 50 times sine of 92. When we cross multiply here, divided by 305.85. And when you solve for that theta, when you inverse the sine of that right side, you end up getting 9.4 degrees. So this is the airspeed, and then this is the theta that we solve in the triangle. So going back to this triangle, that means this theta here, it's 9.4 degrees. So notice that um, we can answer what the direction is now as well. Notice that this resultant is north 72 degrees west. Well, if we add 9.4 to 72, that would give us this angle, which would be 81.4. So the direction of the plane is north 81.4 degrees west, right? So the airspeed, Final answer is 305.85 kilometers per hour. And then the direction is north 81.4 degrees west. So those are your final answers, right? So uh, not too bad of a question. I guess the trickiest part was uh, knowing that the wind is coming from this direction of south 20 degrees west. So instead of going south 20 degrees west, you got to go the opposite 
way because if it was going towards south 20 degrees west and the head of the vector is here, then we would have to transfer that up here, right? Because that wind and the resultant, they meet, oh, I erased that diagram, but they meet head to head, right? If you look at that previous diagram that I drew with the plane, the wind, and the resultant, but because it was coming from that direction, the tail of the vector is here, the head of the wind vector is up there. So that um, the wind and the resultant, they meet at that point. And then, uh, yeah, just combining angles, and then it just becomes a regular triangle. So you do cosine law, sine law, you get your airspeed, you get your direction.